everybody, and welcome to Who Ate It First. My name is Logan Rundquist. And I'm Kendall Rundquist. Actually, this is Who Drank It First. What? (laughs) We're having a bit of a crazy month, so I didn't actually have time to do a full episode research. So you're getting a Who Drank It First, but I think it's a good one. I think you're going to want to listen. Yeah, it should be good. And we're not counting this toward our total um, episodes for the season. Don't worry. In case you were worried, don't worry. Yeah, so this is just a bonus episode. This isn't the fourth episode of the season. We're just taking a small break, but we still want to provide an episode this week for you. This is a mini-sode, as it were. It's mini. It's cute. We'll see how long this actually goes. (laughs) I'm very loquacious. We'll see how long it takes us to get through this episode because we've already been drinking. Drinking. What was? I'm just kidding. We literally had one sip. Had one sip. Had one sip. But we're in our 30s. So that means it hits us harder. <laughs> I only just turned 30, okay? <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Today, we are doing the history of the margarita. Ooh. You know what? We as Americans, we drink these all the time. We but do. do we know where they come from? Mexico. Maybe. <laughs> That's my guess. Maybe. You know what? Let me take you back to school for a second. All right. Let's get on that magic school bus. Magic school bus. Oh, Miss Frizzle. Hello. Where are you? I love that show. Etymology wise, margarita actually translates to daisy oh, okay. in English. Isn't that the cutest thing ever? I do know that. So cute. But keep that in your noggin because I tell you that it's kind of important. Just keep it in your brain. Okay. Is it in there? It's there. Okay. good. (laughs) So important to note up at the top, there's four key ingredients to the margarita, no matter what version of history you're looking at. They are as follows. Tequila Blanco, some kind of orange liqueur, which could be Cointreau, Curacao, Triple Sec, whatever, some kind of orange situation. Fresh lime juice and salt. That's it. Nice. Margaritas are really very simple. Spirits made from agave are known as mezcal, and they actually date back hundreds of years as they spread from coastal regions inland. By the 19th century, a tiny strip of land in central Mexico gained enough popularity that the alcohol they produced began to be known simply as tequila. We know tequila. Mm Mm-hmm. And they use that naming convention similarly to the sparkling wine in France. Their nearby village was called Champagne. So they did something similar. They named their alcohol from a nearby city called it tequila. And this is all in central Mexico, by the way, if I didn't state that already. (laughs) By the end of the 1800s, tequila was introduced to the States. Some stories place that as... Tequila Sousa, I think is how you pronounce it. And everybody knows that brand. Sousa is very popular. And that was supposedly introduced at the Chicago World's Fair of 1893. (laughs) So that's kind of cool. You know what I've always wanted to go to? A A World's Fair. Fair. (laughs) They sound so cool. Yeah. When you hear about them. I mean, like back then, they were dope. Like people were bringing the newest and greatest stuff yeah food technology inventions ideas fashion literally everything they sound like they would have been amazing yeah it's like the vidcon of today Mm -hmm. it's like the south by of today (laughs) i'm just kidding that was a very poor analogy (laughs) but that's just where my brain went so while recipes are in and of themselves, sparse until the mid-20th century. People didn't really write down their recipes, you know? People just kind of did them off the cuff. Mm -hmm. But tequila most likely made its first appearance in recipes as a substitution for another liquor. And in this article called The Myth of the Margarita and Its Many Inventors by Al Sotak. Okay. Or Sotak. Sotak. I'm one sorry, those, Al, probably. one of those two. This is a game that bartenders love to play, which is basically what we're doing of who ate it first or who drank it first. They like to try to figure out where drinks come from. So there's lots of different variations of story. Who could have made the margarita first? Where did it come from? 
we wouldn't be making this podcast if we had a clear answer, right? <laughs> that would be boring. So we're going to talk about a bunch of different sort of ways that the margarita could have come to be. Jafiel. Jafiel. Backing it up a little bit to some cocktail history. Have you ever heard of a drink called the Daisy? No. It's a very classic cocktail, part of the golden age of cocktails. It's made with either brandy or whiskey, and it's a sour where the sugar element has been replaced with a sweet liqueur, most notably an orange one. They were very tasty. It was a big staple in the 20s and in the early years of the 1900s. If you were to replace the brandy with what was sometimes referred to as a mezcal brandy, you'd have something very close to the modern margarita. Because as I mentioned, margarita means daisy. Daisy. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. (laughs) And I tell you all of this because there's a tequila daisy recipe dating from 1925 in Tijuana. And by that time, the house daisy being served at the turf bar was a gin drink with lime, grenadine, and seltzer water. And according to the stories, a barkeep working there at the time grabbed the wrong bottle and used tequila instead of gin. As I said earlier, tequila was probably a substitute. So whoopsie daisy, he used tequila. Just kidding. Everybody loved it. It's a new version of the daisy and it became a house specialty. And that's one version of how the margarita came to be. Accidents are always my favorite version (laughs) of things. To be fair, this one kind of makes sense because tequila blanco is clear and so is gin. Mm -hmm. So to be fair, that could be a very plausible mistake. Yeah, like the myth of the chocolate chips getting knocked into the cookie (laughs) recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Like accidents are always my favorite. That one seems a little less plausible. You'd have to (laughs) knock with quite some force. Oh, whoops. Oh, Oh, no. uh, And I can't just turn off my mixer. Like, the (laughs) mixer just keeps going. Oh, no. I threw it into the oven and baked them, too. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) It's very silly. I do like that story, though. One of my favorites. The second way, in the Cafe Royale cocktail book by William J. Tarling, there was one drink simply labeled tequila i love that short sweet to the point but here again we find the same combination of tequila lime and grenadine and in the same book hides a recipe called the picador which is tequila cointreau and citrus and tarling suggests that it's pretty much the modern day margarita without the salt sick so that's instance number two in 1939 charles h baker published his book The Gentleman's Companion, which he (laughs) describes witnessing Mexican locals adding salt and citrus to their tequila. And in his second volume of the book, he describes a drink called the Mexican Firing Squad, which is apparently still a drink you can order today at very specialty bars that specialize in classic cocktails. So like the Roosevelt Room in Austin, I Mm -hmm. think they have one of these. But the Mexican Firing Squad is a drink combination of tequila, lime, grenadine, and Angostura bitters. And it also lands very close to the tequila daisy from Tijuana. It's served on the rocks, so a little closer to how Americans today think of the margarita as we know it. And in 1939, that same year, as Baker's book was released, another book called The World Famous Cotton Club by barman Charlie Connolly shares another drink with the same name I mentioned earlier, simply tequila. This time, we find our picador combination of tequila, lime juice, and orange liqueur only with one difference. Connolly specifies the drink is to be served in a glass rimmed with salt. There it is, folks. There you go. So that was me taking you through what was most likely the historical iteration of the margarita but again we can't really be certain but i can tell you a couple fun stories about how maybe this was also what could potentially be the origin of the margarita one fun story that was in this article there's actually a lot of stories i think in one other article it said there's actually eight potential stories like this anecdotes this is just one i didn't want to give you eight (laughs) But bartender Albert Hernandez, who is famous for making margaritas at San Diego's La Plaza in the 1940s, 
was supposed to have invented the drink all by himself, literally from his brain. He's a genius at his bar, Rancho La Gloria. And this much repeated tale goes that he made it for actress Marjorie King, who happened to be allergic to all other booze except tequila. (laughs) So she's like, honey, make me a drink, but I can only drink tequila, but I don't love the taste of it. It's too strong. Can you give me a little something, something? And he's like, okay, I feel you. So he experimented with citrus flavors to mask the taste of tequila and his combination she approved. And he ended up naming it the margarita, which was the closest translation to Marjorie. So that's not a Spanish name. But most drink historians consider this a false fake story. Boo. Which is sad because I kind of love it. Like Marjorie King was a real person. She was indeed an actress, a showgirl, very famous. But apparently this is a false story. And of course, it's possible that there's more than one true margarita story. Many truths can exist at the same time in food history. The cocktail can spring up from the collective consciousness in many places all at once. Just because those ingredients were popular at the time. Bartenders Mm. were just, you know, slinging drinks, making stuff up. You know, West Coast, East Coast, it could have been, it could have happened anywhere or multiple times simultaneously. And so we find tequila making its home in the American subconscious sort of that way. And of course, who could forget by 1958, the godfather of Latino rock, Danny Flores. We were all singing the song, tequila, but do, 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 do. Of course, tequila was in everyone's brain. You love tequila. You love the song. What do you drink when you sing tequila? Tequila. Yeah, tequila shooters, tequila whatever. So anyway, plenty of times when recipes or drinks can't be traced back to a singular origin of creation. Drinks like the Mexican Firing Squad, the Picador, and the Tequila Daisy all share commonality and history with today's well-known margarita. And of course, we know how bartenders work. As I said, at any time, there's no doubt dozens of other bartenders working on nearly identical drinks. You're working with the same ingredients. It's bound to happen. But the margarita is a drink that has truly stood the test of time. It's one of the only drinks most inexperienced drinkers can order with any confidence. Bartenders still love to make it and they love to play with it. They love to riff on it. They love to experiment with it it's very versatile yeah it makes sense because margarita on its own is feels like it could be something that's sort of like a blank canvas right like you have your base but you could do a lot with it exactly so i definitely want one of these right now do you want to go make one yeah tell me how to make it cool we're using this recipe from liquor.com this one is slightly different than the one i mentioned above just because i like mine slightly sweeter so this is just minorly different from the classic that i mentioned Two ounces Blanco tequila, half an ounce of orange liqueur of your choice, one ounce of lime juice freshly squeezed, half an ounce of agave syrup, and you're going to garnish with a lime wheel. And of course, you're going to garnish with salt. You have to garnish with salt. Otherwise, history says that ain't it. So you're going to add your tequila, your orange liqueur, lime juice, and agave to a shaker filled with ice and shake until chilled. Strain into a rocks glass over fresh ice and garnish with a lime wheel and salt rim. Of course, that's optional, but really, you should. You should do it. <laughs> Let's take a little sippy sip. Let's take a little sip sip. Mm. Mine's gone. <laughs> Kendall's is gone. He's not kidding. He was drinking it as I was speaking. Oops. Oopsie that poopsie. sip became the whole drink. That sip went. Goo, goo, goo. <laughs> My bad. Honestly, these are so good. These are, dare I say, dangerous. I could really suck this down real quick. I did. Kendall did in there. <laughs> Probably get another one. These are so fresh, so good. The agave is a perfect little sweetness additive. You you might not even need it if you don't want it. Um, I was just trying to go for something slightly more natural because I know Kendall gets headaches from sort of your mass produced margaritas, like your you know your bucket schooners or your Chewy's big huge thing. Frozen margaritas. Frozen, yeah. yeah. 
So I've been trying to drink more like skinny margaritas. This is definitely in the realm of a skinny margarita if you ever order one. Yeah, a little more pure ingredients, less sugar. Yeah. Better tequila, that's important. Yeah, like proper tequila, uh, definitely a lot less sugar. Like that's a big problem with frozen margaritas is there's so much sugar content in those frozen margaritas. Yeah. Like people don't even realize like there's a lot of sugar in those. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they, they leave me like feeling really gross and bloated usually nowadays. So I can't really drink them anymore. Like when you get chewies, like I usually don't even get the frozen margaritas half the time because like I feel gross the rest of the, the night. Yeah. And I get it. Sometimes I just want that experience, you know. I'm a girl. I want my frozen marg. I want my chips and salsa or guac, whatever. But yeah, no, I definitely get it. I do try to order skinnies for if no other reason to just get less of that artificial sugar and Mm. i want more of like the citrus notes although i will say sometimes i will get a floater of tequila on top of my frozen and that does help i feel like you need a little bit more alcohol to dissolve that sugar to cut the sugar yes so that could be a tip if anybody is like you're gonna pry those frozens out of my cold dead hand hey (laughs) i get you maybe just add a floater on top and that could kind of help cut that sugar for you and i do always get a salt rim the salt helps cut the sugar too just saying Mm -hmm. but these are very good these are delicious um 11 out of 10 for me (laughs) goodbye forever these are delicious yeah no these are definitely an 11 out of 10 10 out of 10 whatever Um, yes kendall yeah definitely good fresh ingredients um we used a decent tequila it was on cheap brand but still like a decent tequila oh and we used Um, triple sec i didn't note and triple sec yeah You can use Curacao, blue Curacao, if you're feeling you want a bit of a blue vibe. That's cool. They also have a clear orange Curacao that you can buy. That's true. It all tastes the same. It's all orange. Yeah. Yeah. The blue Curacao is an orange liqueur, too. For more information on that, listen to our Blue Lagoon episode. (laughs) Um, But yeah, yeah. Really good. I like it. I don't have much else to say about it. It's a classic, right? It is. You can't really go wrong with it. I mean, you can go wrong. I've had bad margaritas before. (laughs) Well, okay. (laughs) <laughs> then that's just a bad bartender, I think. True. Because, like, it's not hard to make. Yeah, if you can't make this, you might want to improve your bartending skills a little bit. <laughs> Even I can make this. And as we learned from Who Drank It First previous episodes, I'm not that great of a bartender. <laughs> um, but even I can make this one. Yeah. So, not to diss on anybody, but... You can do it. You yeah. can do it. Go out and make this. It's very, very easy. It was good. Do it. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up. Right? Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for indulging me. Sorry, it's not a full episode. <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. We should be back next week for a full-fledged uh, episode of Who Ate It First. Yeah, we'll resume our regularly scheduled programming. Yeah. Guess I need to do my research. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks everyone for listening. Uh, again, if you enjoy what we do, share our content with your friends and family because we'd love to hit those listening goals so that we can give you all even more content. Because we have a ton of fun making this, and we hope that you have a ton of fun listening to it. And we love you. And we and we love you. <laughs> Full. That's it. We love you. Full stop. <laughs> Period. Dot. So. Mic drop. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. Bye. Love you. Goodbye. Bye. I love you. Bye.